when I started the process of going through medical school and applying to get into medical school, uh, on my personal statement, I said that I wanted to help people. Um, not only now I realize that not only can I help people, I can help the people who help people. I have been doing a lot of uh, lecturing and teaching other urologists and other physicians on how to improve their practices, practice efficiencies, etc. There is a special person who is in Detroit, Dr. Paul Thomas. He assists other physicians in starting their special type of practice called direct primary care, which may be the cure for our broken healthcare system. Not only is he a physician who practices in direct primary care, he literally wrote the book on direct primary care. And I'm showing you a screenshot of the book that he wrote, Direct Primary Care, The Cure for Our Broken Healthcare System. I'm excited to have Dr. Uh, Thomas on the program today to discuss his passion, direct primary care, and how he helps other physicians get to where he is. And he has accomplished quite a lot, so I'm really excited to uh, hear his story. Uh, Dr. Thomas, thank you so much for uh, being on the program today. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Lin. It's a pleasure to be here. So let's go right into it. A lot of people don't know what, a lot of physicians and a lot of, uh, definitely a lot of consumers, potential patients, don't know what is direct primary care and how is that different than concierge medicine? Can you let yes. us know? Yeah, that's the most common question I get is, what's the difference between direct care and concierge medicine? Well, concierge medicine, you have to have some sort of insurance plan. And they really charge about $2,400 a year. That's the average cost for a concierge medicine platform. And then when you come in for a visit, you're billed through your insurance for each visit. Okay, so it's really care, primary care for the top three to 5% income earners. And they really focus on the C-suite, the CEO, CFO, CEOs, and they do a lot of executive physicals, things like that. For direct primary care, we deliver primary care services for everyone, and it's a membership model, and it's monthly. And it's usually between $50 to $100 a month for adults. The average cost is about 80 bucks a month for our members per month. And then we don't bill or use insurance on top of their monthly membership. Our patients can see us as many times as they need to within a month, and we can uh, not bill them for those services because it's covered in the monthly membership. So those are the two biggest differences. And, and not only that, direct primary care, you can offer simple procedures in the office with, uh, with, which is included, and uh, you negotiate directly with laboratory uh, services, imaging services. You can dispense in, in, in a lot of states. You can dispense medications, which end up costing a lot less than Walmart. Yeah, it's really amazing. In the concierge model, they're gonna, they know that you're not price sensitive. So these consumers in concierge medicine are price insensitive. They don't care how much it's gonna cost. They just want whatever they want. In direct primary care, a lot of our patients are in middle or lower income brackets. And so they're really cost conscious about how much is it gonna be for my lisinopril. And rather than somebody sending somebody to the pharmacy for lisinopril for $10 copay, we can dispense it out of our office for 30 cents. Um, just on Sunday, somebody was bitten by their dog, um, bit through their lip, and uh, they required three stitches. So they sent me a text message. I met them up my office 20 minutes later, and I sewed it up for them free of charge because they're already a member of our practice. Yeah. And if they went to the ER, it would have been two grand because they're uninsured. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It, there, there are a lot of benefits. And, and for those interested in uh, a direct primary care, you can definitely Google and find out about direct primary care and, and see if there are any physicians in your area offering this type of service. This this is catching on because of significant physician burnout. And uh, I'm sad to say that urologists in a recent Medscape survey are the most burned out when it comes to the practice of medicine. Oh. And we certainly cannot have our frontline physicians like the primary care doctors, family medicine, internal medicine, we cannot have our primary care doctors fail. Yep. Yeah, I, I really hate the term physician burnout because if half the lights in my office went out, you know, the burnout rate in medicine is about 50%. So if half the lights in my office went out, I wouldn't say, wow, there are 50 bad light bulbs in my building. No, I'd say, wow, there's something wrong with their power grid. There's a systems-based problem. So I think we really need to reframe how we look at burnout 
and, and really focus on, you know, the system wide problems. And, and that's just the thing. There are so many family doctors and physicians in general facing so many challenges that are outside of their control. And direct primary care gives doctors the opportunity to take control of their practice and practice on their own terms to help their patients to the best of their abilities. And that that is because you have eliminated the interference of third party payer system. Now the the patient has a direct contract, if you will, with you. And thusly, you right. are you are really, uh, if you will, a fiduciary for the. A healthcare fiduciary for the f- true healthcare fiduciary for the patient, without having some third party telling you that you have to go through some step therapy, that you have to get prior authorization and delay care. That's right, and that's the best part, really. I get to deliver care for my patients that's appropriate for them and not algorithm based because an insurance company mandates it. I'm really looking out for my patient's best interest, and so if they have lower back pain and we try X, Y, and Z, and they want an MRI, we don't have to get the x-ray first. I will probably recommend an x-ray first because we can get it for $50. But if they need the MRI and they want to pay cash for it, it's $300 to get that MRI of the lumbar spine, and we can go right to that if we need to. So, um, little- And I'm really a navigator. I'm trying to navigate my patients to the best resources that are the most cost-effective and of the highest quality. And what is unique about you is that you did not go the traditional route of being in some institution, work for a practice for a while, you went directly from residency into direct primary care. Not only that, you've been very, very successful at it. Within three years, you've already filled your panel of, I think, 500, around 500 uh, members. Yeah, so, um, you know, I have 460 patients now, and my practice partner, she has 190 patients right now. Wow, she just started too. Yeah, she just started in July. So we've really wow. bumped up our search engine optimization, our branding and marketing to attract more patients to her panel. And she's a fabulous doctor and patients really love seeing her, Dr. Raquel Orlick. Obviously the quality has to be good. And I'm going to show the audience a screenshot of your practice, Plum Health Direct Primary Care, healthcare, hassle-free, and the little sign up button, which is uh, brilliant. Okay, Thank you. you mentioned marketing, SEO, and things like that. That is part of your passion. Not only are you passionate mm-hmm. about taking care of patients in the Detroit area, you are also passionate in helping physicians who are interested in direct primary care get to the level where you are. Can you tell us a little bit about that service? Yeah, I really believe in the family physician and the primary care docs, the frontline doctors, and I want to have a doctor like this as I age, and I want a doctor like this for my family and community members. So I really want to help other doctors adopt this model if they want to. And so I'm really putting together the best resources that I can on my new website. It's called startupdpc.com. And a lot of doctors struggle, especially with the branding and marketing, because there's zero training for that in medical school and residency. So I really help doctors to understand these complicated concepts, how to write a business plan, how to brand your practice, how to brand yourself as a physician, and how to market your practice to your community um, while, while delivering a tremendous service simultaneously. So I put all those together in some free blog posts and some paid courses on my website called startupdpc.com. And the response has been tremendous. I've had a lot of doctors who I've interviewed, who I've consulted with, who I've helped along the way um, start their practices this way. So th- let's talk about that a little bit. Um, I, I really like how you are, you know, you've, you've gotten there. Now you're helping other physicians get to where you are and you're essentially paying it forward, which is, which is my, my, my passion as well now. Um, so let's, let's talk about some of the top questions from the folks that you helped, the physicians who you helped in, in their journey to start a DPC practice. Yeah. The biggest one is how do I attract patients to my practice? Because my name is no longer on the back of somebody's health insurance card, right? So now you're in the free market and you're competing with everyone from urgent cares to big box hospital systems to acupuncturists, chiropractors, et cetera. How, how can you stand out? And so that's a big question. And then the, another one I get is, you know, what is search engine optimization? Um, how, do, how do I direct people to my practice website? How do I build a sales funnel? to get people to come to my website and sign up for my service. Okay, what, uh, and, and, I, and I love this topic because I, I, 
I, uh, I don't know if you know this, but I own the domain name makeamericapeeagain.com as a urologist. I deal with enlarged prostates. And also I, I, perform, I perform a lot of vasectomies. So I own, a, I own multiple domain names in that, in that realm. Uh, mm -hmm. Things like all juice, no seed, experminator.com, uh, comeworryfree.com <laughs> spelled both ways. <laughs> so I, I own all those domain names. So I, I fully understand and realize the value of branding, messaging, and marketing, if you will. A lot of physicians think that, oh, marketing is such a shameful, unethical, scammy thing. When, mm -hmm. so, so here's the analogy I draw to my, to my urologists who I, I, I try to help. You may be the best vasectomist or the guy who performs mm -hmm. the best surgery for enlarged prostate. You may be the mm -hmm. best urologist in that field. However, if nobody knows about it, you are just another urologist. So right. that is that is the importance of getting the message out there about what you're passionate about, what you love doing, and mm -hmm. there's nothing shameful about it. As a matter of fact, I think of it as now I'm able to engage my potential patients and let them know that, hey, you, you have a problem when you get up five times a night and there is a cure. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think it's your duty and responsibility to communicate your value to the world as a physician. So here's the way I phrase it. Marketing equals character plus communication. And so you have a great character. You're a physician. You've been practicing. You put in the 36-hour call. You've been there for 11 years of training, undergrad, med school, residency, maybe even more. For urologists, what, 13 years? 14. Yeah, 13 to 14 years. Yeah, exactly. So you've been there. You put in the hard work. And the missing piece for a lot of doctors is just communicating their value to the world. So Character plus communication equals marketing. And 100%. that's what I teach doctors. You're not, you're not a used car salesman. You're not uh, trying to sell a, a crappy product to somebody. You're selling a trusting relationship with people. You're selling your best effort to help your patients. And if that comes across in an authentic way, you can really reach people and help them better their lives. And there's nothing better than that. I 100% I agree with you. And um, I, I, share, I share my my productivity and stuff like that with my fellow urologists in, in a private Facebook group. And, um, there's uh, not only am I able to help a lot more people, a lot more patients, I now mm -hmm. am able to help other urologists, which makes me even happier. So, uh, marketing SEO. All right. And, um, what are some of the other questions that your, uh, fellow members ask? Oh, you know, they ask about the nuts and bolts of starting a practice. How to write a business plan is a big one. Um, how to find the perfect practice location for your yourself. Um, how much is malpractice insurance? Everybody seems to think that your biggest expense is malpractice insurance. And if you're not delivering baby, that's babies, that's probably not the case. It's usually pretty inexpensive. Maybe if you're in Texas, it could be $150 a month. If you're in Michigan, it could be $500 a month. Um, versus your busy, biggest expenses really are staffing and square footage or the size of your office and how many people you employ. Yeah, typically for most businesses, employees are the largest expense and um, rent or, or, or your plant may be a, a second line. Um, I think yeah. for direct primary care, once your medical malpractice carrier understands that you are not like most primary care doctors seeing or carrying uh, thousands of patients under your panel, you only have 400, 500. So mm -hmm. that limits exposure and also the type of care that you deliver, being able to, to have a, a nice, uh, deep, meaningful, and potentially long-lasting relationship with your patients, that in itself is going to mitigate potential risk, litigation. Yeah, you're, you're fostering a lot of trust between doctor and patient because we can spend an hour with you during your first appointment and at least 30 minutes for every follow-up. So we really have time to talk about the medications we want to use, the side effects, what to look out for, how long are we planning on using this therapy, and really get down to all the concerns that patients have. You know, I ask people on their way out, I always want to make sure that I answer all of your questions, and I always want to make sure you have a great experience at our clinic. And those two questions, you usually get all the, all the stuff you missed, because people have things that they want to ask about. So those are great ways of eliciting concerns on the front end. And because I'm in this model, I have the time to do that. Absolutely. And just to put some numbers on it, the typical family doctor has 2,400 patients. The typical 
direct primary care doctor may have 400 to 500 patients. So we have five times fewer patients and therefore five times more time with each individual patient. And the other thing is you are not having to deal with any of the hassles with insurance. Uh, you don't really have to do uh, some sort of crazy electronic health records that you have to check all the boxes so you're not paying attention more on the, on the, on the device and filling, <laughs> filling the blanks and you are more concentrated and solely concentrated on taking care of the patient. Yep. A amen. And, you know, I, when I was practicing in my residency, I would spend maybe eight to 10 minutes with my patient and then 10 to 15 minutes documenting the EMR for like a 20, 25 minute visit. And now when I have a 30 minute visit, I spend 20 to 25 minutes with my patient face to face, and then maybe five minutes writing in my EMR or electronic medical record. It's, it's, it's interesting in urology uh, because the, the services that we provide tend to be higher ticket items. We are mm -hmm. slightly more bound to insurance base, even though there are efforts to uh, leave this insurance model. And uh, some, some urologists and physicians are, are getting out of Medicare completely, not even participating mm -hmm. in Medicare from the very beginning. It's I'm opted out. Yeah, yeah, I'm opted out of Medicare. But you know what's so crazy? You have to keep opting out every two years. That's correct. That's ridiculous. So here's here's something else for for physicians or, or residents in training. Um, one way to never be addicted to heroin, Medicare, is to never start yeah. heroin. <laughs> it's to never start heroin, right? So yeah. for the residents who are starting out, you can consider not even becoming partic becoming a participating provider with Medicare from the outset. That way, you don't have to remind yourself to opt out every two years. That's correct. It's crazy. Yep. Okay. And that just that so, just allows us to practice unencumbered by the big health insurers, Medicare, Medicaid, or private insurance um, that are going to fight with us about what we want to do for our patients. Yeah, and you truly become your patients' advocates. Unfortunately, I have to, I have to have a big staff to navigate the insurance hurdles so that I can advocate on behalf of my patients to provide them the the, the therapies that we know that is necessary, but then insurance companies understand that any hurdles, any prior offs, that, any hurdles that they put forth, it decreases utilization. And it's all a numbers mm -hmm. game to them. The, the implementation is. cost to, to create the hurdle is going to be less, right? It's, it's going to be less. It's going to save them more money. So they're, they're going to implement it, of course. Yeah. It's, not like, it's not like I want to just order willy-nilly some scan that has ionizing radiation for the patient because I think about that. Yeah, willy-nilly, is that a urology pun? <laughs> Make America pee again, baby. Yeah, there you go, dot com. Yeah, um, so Startup DPC, I, I showed the audience a, a screenshot of your, of your Startup DPC uh, website. It has, uh, already has a lot of good information uh, about how someone can get started in direct primary care. And there's a lot of learn more and um, take action, books, blogs, how to's and things like that. So I think uh, for those who are interested, it's gonna be uh, really helpful to at least start there. And, and believe it or not, there are a lot of good YouTube videos and uh, information on Google. Yeah. Direct primary care is a movement that I think is really, really taking off. Uh, mm -hmm. And there are numerous organizations, not just startupdpc.com, but there are numerous organizations available to help currently practicing physicians, direct primary care doctors transitioning to DPC model or someone who's just, you know, straight out of residency want to get into it. Do you, uh, can you name off some of those? I'm not too familiar oh, with that. Oh, for sure. Yeah, definitely. There, um, so every year there's three major direct primary care conferences and that's just the best way to go learn about it. You know, other than our site, in my opinion. But uh, if you want to get out to the, one of these conferences, you get to network with other doctors who are thinking about starting or who have started or have been doing it for three or five or seven years and really get to understand their personalities, what makes them tick. And um, those are put on by the American Academy of Family Physicians. They have a DPC summit. The next one is, I believe it's in July in Kansas City. Um, in, I believe it's May of this year, 2020 in uh, Denver, the Hint Health Organization is putting on another direct primary care summit. And then in November of every year down in Florida, um, there is the uh, Docs for Patient Care Foundation and they put on the DPC Nuts and Bolts Conference. And they're each about two, three days a piece and you get some great content, some great learning 
I, I've spoken at um, these conferences in the past, just about every year, and talking mostly about branding and marketing because that's where my passion lies. But it's just a great way to network and learn. And outside of that, there's a, a few other websites like DPC Frontier. They have a mapper of all the practices across the country. Currently, there's 1,200 doctors doing this across the country. When I started three and a half years ago, there were only like three or 400 practices. So we've seen some really good growth there. Um, and outside of that, there are a few other good resources like the DPC Alliance, um, just some independent doctors working together to grow this movement. Uh, DPC Action, they work on the legislative side. Um, there's a lot of good people in this movement trying to push this movement forward. I'm writing it all down here, so I'm going to put it in the show notes and the video description below. I'm going to look these up and then provide all the links for the uh, listening and, and viewing audience. That's awesome, man. All right. What are you working on now? Oh, man, I'm seeing patients today. It's, uh, what is it, Tuesday today? Yes. Just take care of patients. Um, and, you know, we mailed some meds today. We're going to have a few follow-up appointments. It's the last day that I'm hosting a student. I'm a assistant professor at Wayne State, so we're going to have lunch together. And... Um, you know, just keep creating more content to help other doctors and, and keep pushing this movement forward. This morning I had a meeting with a company with 700 employees, and we're looking at how we can bring direct primary care to their company. So we're going to hire another doctor in July and help uh, another company save money, lower their overall expenditures so they can pay their empl employees more. Um, rather than wasting on the middlemen of the health insurance system. So that, that has a lot, a couple, at least a couple of benefits. Number one, you're keeping your employees healthy. And for the business, it is better for them to have healthy employees and continue to work and not, not have them call out. And yep, um, exactly. not only that, it, it helps employees. Obviously, everyone wants to stay healthy and cost and access become a non-issue in a DPC model. And, and lastly... Right it helps the businesses save money because you are cutting out essentially the middle person. Right, and then every time we prevent an ER visit or an urgent care visit by sewing up a laceration or taking care of an asthma or COPD exacerbation, um, we just save you maybe $300 at the urgent care, maybe $2,000 or $3,000 at the emergency department. Oh yeah. So that's, that's a big amount of money for a small company. That's huge. Yeah, definitely. Well, I want to thank you so much for uh, getting on, on the program here and sharing your passion for patients as well as uh, fellow physicians who are interested in starting up a DPC program. Well, thank you so much for having me. This has been phenomenal. Great questions, and I look forward to re-watching this one. And, and I can't wait to see what you do in the future. And, and from what I understand, you're writing, you're working on a second book, so I'm going to look, look out for that one. Yeah, it's coming out. That one's going to be called Startup DPC, um, how to start and grow your direct primary care practice. Just like the website, you know, I've, I've compiled all the questions I've gotten over the last two or three years from other doctors and put it into one resource. Wonderful. Thank you so much again, Dr. Thomas. You're welcome. All right, you guys, that's it for today's interview. If you have any questions, comments about direct primary care, if you are a patient or potential patient, uh, definitely look it up on online. I will link up all the sites that Dr. Thomas uh, uh, mentioned in the show notes. And if you are a physician or primary care doctor who's feeling a little burned out and are thinking about how you can reconnect with your patients and not uh, run on a treadmill and on a, on, a, on a little hamster wheel all day long and trying to never catch your breath and, and having to finish your notes at home, uh, think about this model, which may be... Uh, saving grace for healthcare system and also maybe for your soul. All right. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.